Thanks, Oscar. And not surprisingly, events in Greece are driving business news today. European officials are talking about what happens next. The finance minister of France says a resounding no vote from Greece doesn't mean an automatic exit from the Eurozone. But Greece will have to come up with some new proposals. I told you and I want Well, the airline, of course, posted a $2.8 billion loss just in August, so that was top of mind. And the chairman, Lee Clifford, at the outset said that they understood that that result was uh, completely unsatisfactory. This farming family is taking a break in the middle of a hot day, but the heat for them is hardly subsiding. They're palm oil growers harvesting on peatland, working amidst the fires and smoke of Riau province. But they're not contributing to the burning that's been going on around them. Rather, they say they've become victims of it. I'm sad, sad, angry and everything. I curse the government for not giving any help with this fire. Indonesia's President Joko Widodo has been deflecting international pressure over the impending execution of several foreigners. Now a trusted confidant has stepped into the debate, the high-profile governor of Jakarta. Here's Indonesia correspondent Helen Brown, who is in Jakarta. So, Helen, tell us more about the process of returning the bodies to Australia. Well, as you mentioned, Roz, the bodies arrived in Jakarta early yesterday afternoon uh, when that convoy of ambulances rolled into Jakarta and went... You can have your money back. Tony Abbott's comments linking tsunami aid to appeals over the death penalty have not gone down well, insulting ordinary Indonesians and sparking a nationalistic streak. All we are saying is that our dignity and self-respect shouldn't be sold. Setting the right tone is vitally important. Indonesia feels strongly about what it sees as intervention in its sovereignty. And influential voices in local media are talking about how Indonesia might push back against further international pressure. Helen Brown, ABC News, Jakarta. In Indonesia, though, the mass media is essentially owned by uh, a group of rich, powerful men, of which you are one, Pakari. Um, who have a lot of control and influence. Now, do you think that is a threat at all to democracy in Indonesia? Well, not really. Uh, actually, democracy is happening you know, since the beginning until today. We have been trying to really respect democracy. That's very, very important. Thanks, Oscar. And Australia's opened up a new business front with China, signing a historic deal for live cattle exports, which could earn up to $2 billion a year. Until now, Australia has only sent boxed beef to China. Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten is facing a second day at the Trade Union Royal Commission. She joins us now from in front of the hearing room in central Sydney. Helen, what was this warning from the Commissioner to Bill Shorten about? Well, about an hour into proceedings, we got this very strong rebuke from the Commissioner to Bill Shorten, essentially asking him to concentrate more on his answers and suggesting that he was being evasive. He said